Welcome to the Beautifully Aligned Podcast. My name is Lynn Ford, and I am a certified life coach. If you are looking to become more aligned in life from your style to wellness to mindset to your relationships to success, then you have come to the right place. My goal for this podcast is to guide you in recognizing the boundless potential within you, empowering you to achieve anything that you aspire to be, do, or have. Thank you so much for being here today. Now, let's get into the show. Hello, hello. I hope that you are having an amazing day. I hope that you enjoyed my brand new intro. I promised you I would do it. And I did it. So now I don't have to introduce this podcast in a different but same way every single week. We can just get right into things. So this week, I am talking about maintaining and sustaining goals and staying on track because staying on track is one of the biggest hurdles that I find with my co- my one-on-one coaching clients is staying on track with goals. Now in coaching, I will help you significantly. And working with a coach is one way to stay on track, but I'm going to give you so many different ways to help you stay on track, to maintain what it is that you are looking to maintain, to sustain a goal and follow through with that goal. Because like I said, what I have seen is that it can be very, very challenging to stick with a goal. If you are like, yes, you're speaking my language, it's so freaking hard for me to stick to what I said I'm going to do or follow through with my New Year's resolutions or whatever it is that you have set your mind to doing and it's really hard, you're not alone. And I'm going to give you a little stat. So in terms of New Year's resolutions, researchers found that only 9% of Americans that make resolutions and goals for themselves actually see them to completion. And research goes on to show that 23% of people quit their resolution by the end of the first week, the first week, like within seven days. And 43% quit by the end of January. So if this is you, please don't beat yourself up. This is just what it is. But today I'm going to give you tools, tips, resources, all of the things to help you stay on track. Before we get into all of the staying on track tips and sustainability and maintaining your goal, I just want to touch on the kind of goal that I encourage you and what I encourage my clients to make when they are creating goals for themselves. And when I work one-on-one with clients, I am not the one developing these goals by any means. It, It is the client who's coming up with the goals, but I will help you and guide you. And I really encourage you to set kind of a unreasonable, big, huge, extraordinary goal. And no, that's not to set you up for failure. It's in fact the exact opposite. The goal is to change you, your mindset, your image in the best way possible. And and just defining it as an extraordinary goal will help you do that. So the purpose of setting this big, quote unquote, unreasonable or extraordinary goal is really to grow you as a human and transform how you see yourself, because that ultimately how you see yourself is the most important thing. It's more important than how others see you, what you think others think of you. And yes, it's big. It should maybe scare you a little bit. Those are the best goals when it scares you a little bit and you will prove yourself right 
if you follow my tips that I have for you today. First tip is when you have this big, huge, extraordinary goal, it might feel exciting, it might feel impossible or scary, and like I said, that's good. But what you want to do to make it achievable is say you're feeling really overwhelmed. It's this big goal and you're like, okay, well, I have this goal. How am I how am I going to do it? I encourage you to set markers for like within the goal. So what I mean by that is accomplishing smaller tasks that will then motivate you to move on to the next task to complete your journey just to see how far that you're you're going each day. So think of these tasks like little stepping stones and you can calendar them out. You can write a to-do list however you want to organize these smaller tasks. Do that. Do what works for you but breaking down the goal into small stepping stones will make this goal so much less intimidating. And I encourage you to do at least like minimum five different steps. This is my favorite tip and it is to make it fun. If you are not having fun with your goal, then what is even the point? So having fun is essential when you are working through your goal. So let me give you an example here. Say your goal is around weight loss specifically, and your goal is to lose 20 pounds in six months. And what you do is you go on a super strict diet, you are counting calories, you feel like you're starving yourself. That is not fun. That is also not sustainable. And on top of this diet that feels super restrictive, so not you, you sign up for a gym membership and you go to certain workout classes, but you feel like you're just like punishing yourself. And these classes leave you feeling exhausted or bored. I'm saying this because I have been there. When I first started my fitness journey, I don't know how long ago, like 12 12 to 15 years ago, I went to a class. It was called, (laughs) I'm laughing because the name was kind of funny and playful. I went to a class called Butts and Guts. And it sounds playful and fun, but it was not either of those things. It It was not challenging enough for me at the time, even though I was just getting into my whole fitness journey, I was bored, but I kept going because it felt like what I was supposed to do, what I should be doing. So many other people were going and they seemed to like it. So I just went too. I quickly moved on from that class. But the point here is, is that You want to pay attention to how these things make you feel as you are going in to the activities to actually achieve your goal. So the way that I felt in that situation was bored. It it felt like a waste of money, and that didn't equal sustainable fitness results for me because I was bored out of my mind, and I felt like I was wasting money on this class. I since long ago, I changed what I was doing. Probably after 10 classes, I went to 10 classes and was like, okay, I'm going to try different things. So I tested out several different group fitness classes. Group fitness was a huge part of my routine. There was a sense of community and accountability there. So that's a huge one. I know we're getting like really niche here on the, the fitness goal specifically but it's something I'm personally very passionate about. So just thought I would share that. So if you are feeling restricted, whether it's in diet or the plan you've made for your exercise, if you have a goal around nutrition, weight loss, fitness in the health realm, 
then I encourage you to make it fun. So let's flip this example around. So instead of your diet being very restrictive, you're counting calories, you feel like you're starving yourself, you're always hungry, it's just not at all fun. Instead, try creating new, maybe healthier versions of recipes that you enjoy. I encourage you to look on Pinterest if this is one of your goals. There are endless recipes for healthier versions of things like chocolate chip cookies. I mean, any of your comfort foods like mac and cheese, there is everything there and you do not have to feel like you are ever restricting yourself diet wise. Another thing you could do is come up with a really yummy menu for the whole week, write it down, full of wholesome meals. And then again, you could go to Pinterest or a cookbook or just online and look up recipes that use healthier ingredients for these things. So you don't feel like you're being given like a sheet from wherever that says, you must eat chicken breast and like a spoonful of rice and vegetables because that is so restrictive. That is so boring. And I don't know many people who actually want that. It is also not sustainable whatsoever. Let's also flip the workout example as well. So instead of feeling bored or this is way too hard or whatever it is, that negative feeling that makes your working out not at all fun. Think about what you actually enjoy. Do you like to dance? Do you like to be outside in nature? Maybe you go on a hike instead of being on a treadmill. Maybe that's super boring to you. Maybe it's trying out a yoga class or playing outside with your kids. There are so many different physical activities that you can try where you will not be bored where you will also be challenged physically, where you will see these changes in your life. So injecting fun into your daily activities, no matter what it is, will lead to success. This one might be boring as F, but I have to say it because it is one of the most important parts of creating a goal that is sustainable. And that is to create a SMART goal. If you don't know what a SMART goal is, it stands for Specific, Measurable, Achievable, Realistic, and Timely. Let me give you an example of what a SMART goal is not and what a SMART goal is just so you can see it put into practice. Okay, so say that I want to publish more blog posts, which is something I am actually working on for my new website is publishing blog posts. Here is a goal that is not at all smart. This is the goal. I will publish more blog posts on my website. That is not smart in any sense. Here is a smart goal. So here is a smart goal around blog posts. Starting next week, I will post a 1500 word article on my blog each week for a year culminating in 52 blog posts and increased traffic to my site. That is a SMART goal. So with each stepping stone within your big extraordinary goal, make sure that every single step is using a SMART approach. The next tip specifically around staying on track and following through with those stepping stones, those smaller goals, is to write them all down and then track them every single day or every single week, however often you are engaging in these activities to complete your big extraordinary goal into a habit tracker. And I am giving you the one that I use and the one that I provide to my clients for free. So if you want to grab it, you can get it in the show notes. It is a Google Sheet. So when you grab it, make sure you make a copy. It won't let you use it unless you make a copy and keep it for yourself. I have seen people charge lots of money for these, and I'm giving it to you for free. It's fully customizable for you to use. 
And what's really cool about it is that you can see your progress like every single day, every single week, you will see this graph that appears. So over time, you can see what you've actually achieved, which I find myself to be so helpful just to see it like physically, like, wow, this is an upward trajectory. I'm making so much progress. So physically seeing it is huge. And keeping the habit tracker is so, so super helpful. So again, you can grab that in the show notes. I will link it for you. Next tip. And by the way, these are in no particular order. They are all cumulatively important, equally important. So next is staying accountable. Let me give you some ways to stay accountable. So first thing is you can hire a one-on-one coach to help you stay accountable. That is something that I do. You can hire me. I have a couple of spots right now in this moment. So if you are listening to this in the spring of 2024, feel free to reach out to me doesn't have to be me. You can hire a coach to help you stay accountable. That is part of what coaches do is to keep you and hold you accountable to what you say you are going to do. You could buddy up with a family member. Say you have a family member who has a similar goal. You could buddy up with them. Maybe it's around a fitness goal and you could go to the gym with them and you set a time to go each day and you have to or you feel like staying accountable and meeting that family member or friend at the gym is going to keep you going. So think about people who might have similar goals to you and talk to them, ask them if they would like an accountability partner. It is one of the best ways to stay on track. When you stay accountable to a certain person, or maybe it's a group of people, you will be so much less likely to make excuses. You will go, you will do the thing that you said you would do, especially if you're in that buddy system, or you have an upcoming meeting with your coach or with your accountability partner to get the shit done that you said you were going to do the previous week, the previous day, or whatever schedule you are on to meet with that person. So accountability banishes those nasty little excuses right in the ass. Last but certainly not least, and this is one of my favorites, is to celebrate your wins. Not just once you've accomplished this huge goal you've set for yourself, but actually celebrating this accomplishing the small stepping stones that you've taken so far because celebrating the small wins will help you will help motivate you to get to this big extraordinary goal celebrating is such an essential element to staying on track for having that sense of accomplishment. And like I said, to motivate you to move on to the next step because you'll continue, hopefully, to celebrate each small step that you accomplish. But it's also about more than just motivation. It's also about hacking your brain's reward system. What do I mean by that? So the regions of your brain that make up the quote unquote, reward system, use the neurotransmitter dopamine, you've probably heard of dopamine, like the happy drug, to communicate reward signals. And dopamine producing neurons feel good. They're the happy, happy little drugs that we get, natural drugs. And they motivate us to keep going to obtain the goals that we've set for ourselves. So some ideas to celebrate your wins. These don't have to cost you any money. They totally can, but I'm going to give you a few ideas. So I personally don't have an Apple Watch, but I know that on the Apple Watch, specifically around fitness, like once you've hit a certain goal, say to take 3,000 steps in a day, it will give you like the celebratory emoji and confetti will go off. At least I think that's what can happen on the Apple Watch. So setting that up, that makes you feel good. 
or maybe a celebratory dinner at the end of the week to celebrate all of those small wins that you have achieved within that week. That's a great one is going out for dinner or even getting takeout, like your favorite takeout. That's one of my favorite things to do. Or sending yourself flowers. Another idea would be around the fitness goal. Clearly, I like to talk about fitness. I personally am a fitness lover. Is maybe you buy yourself a new outfit to celebrate three days in a row of working out or a week or two weeks or whatever that milestone is for you is go buy yourself a cute workout outfit. That's motivating in and of itself to keep you going. So think of ways that will help you celebrate. What do you enjoy? What do you like? What items will you really enjoy? And what will help you move forward to the next step? Those are my very best tips. I hope that you enjoyed this episode. If you did, I would be so grateful if you would share it with somebody who you think might find it useful. So please do that if you are enjoying this show. And with that, I will chat with you next week. Bye.